weights. So there's a couple variations of doing weights on a character. And I'll get into it without getting into the really hard stuff. And the first weighing thing is the ability to paint weights. So if we go up here, we have the paint weight tool. And this is where I start saying it's all about naming convention. So let's go in here to the tool setting and you can see that I have the ability to page through the joints. Now, which joint is it that attaches to that wing? <laughs> well, it's impossible to find out until you go into each one of these click on the bone and then go back into the tool to find out it's joint 52 okay so that's a huge huge gap in your workflow so here's what we're gonna do the mesh is called wing left LB okay so I'm gonna command copy that paste it over here on the bone I'm gonna do the same here Here's the mesh. Here's the bone. Paste that. And lastly, All right, so now let's go back into that tool. Let's grab a wing, go into paint weights tool, go into the tool setting, and that mesh is called the wing LB. So that means if I go to wing LB, the joint, I'll be able to go in this area and find out it's mostly painted white, except for the very tip. Okay, and if I start painting the tip absolute white, it'll have absolute influence over the entire wing. Now, the problem with this is sometimes uh, it doesn't get all the way done. So there's this tool. Since the, all these are separated, it'll work. I can go in here and replace with one and flood the wing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just flood this wing. Okay. Now, this really does help out as far as workflow goes. So I can just go in here, go back into this one. This one is wing LT. So I go into wing LT and then I can just flood. If I go back to the selection tool, this one, and just repeat the process over and over again. So if you need to paint the weights, that's fine. But in this case, I'm just going to flood them. Now, what's the advantages of painting them? Well, I'm going to give you an example, but I'm going to undo it because I think that this isn't really a big deal right here. But in this area, let's pick on this, the body. And this is going to be one of the legs. Okay. So I'm going to call this leg three. Leg three. One. Okay. And then I'm going to call this one leg three, two. And etc. and so forth. So this mesh, what I'm going to do is jump into it, and I'm going to find out that if I choose leg three one, I have this. It's gray here, 
and it goes gray here with a white in the center. White is the absolute, um, it's, it's perfectly hard there. It's like full bone. B on the keyboard allows me to shrink this. So B, click and drag with the left mouse button. I'm just going to shrink this up quite a bit. That allows me to paint on individual vertices. And you can see, if I harden up this joint in this area, again, B, click and drag so I can get a little bit smaller, it'll bend more insect-like because it won't flatten out that one area when I do bend it. Now, where it gets tricky is when they get into this situation. So that's why you have to zoom way in and kind of paint that join in. It gets really tricky when it starts getting into near the other actual objects. And I would say the other side of that is actually soft. It's a softer tissue maybe. So here, if I now bend this, and let me turn on wireframe on shaded. You can see the top has a little bit less influence. Okay. So that's how it works. It works like that. Okay, I really wish I could get the other ones down there, but unfortunately, the only way to really do it is through the other method of adding uh, vertices to the actual skin and weighing them out correctly. And then we're going to go through that on the next video.